I was told by a friend that I was to go to school abroad and get a job and all of that. That was how I was taken to Germany. On reaching Germany, it was more of a, you have to choose either sex exploitation or sex slavery or carrying of drugs. Young girls these days are being exposed to physical and sexual abuse at a very tender age. And some parents deliberately engage their children in this act, in preparing them for this journey, so that they get used to sleeping with men while they are here. They even pressure them to get a boyfriend in order to prepare them early enough, 9, 10 years, 11 years, so that before they get to 10, 12, 14, 15, they will be ripe to engage on this um, journey. The truth is that some of them are aware, and I would say some are, some are not also aware. For those that are aware, they know what they want to do, they know what they will, they will face. Like someone said, they say, it's not just sex. We've been having sex, so if, if 10 men sleep with me, it does not matter. There's high level of poverty in this country. And so people don't mind what they do to come out of it or to earn money, even if it means exploiting another human being to get out of it. They go, wicked ones will do so. You don't pick dollars or pound sterling on the streets or euro, on the ground. You walk tries as hard. The stories haven't changed. The scourge of forced migration and the trafficking of women and girls in Nigeria continues to stare us in the face. Trafficking in persons is the act or the attempted act to recruit, transport, purchase, harbor of um, any person within or outside Nigeria by means of deception, coercion, debt bondage for the purpose of exploitation. So human trafficking is basically about exploiting people deceiving them, coercing them, you know, forcing them into doing things or kidnapping them to do that. Not, it's always against their will. I could give an example of maybe someone who wants to be a house help, for example. That person um, is free to be a house help in Nigeria if she has reached the age of accountability and the age the, that, you know, is legally acceptable. But what would be the exploitation or the human trafficking part of it would be that that person earns the pay, but he's not given the pay. So the pay is being spent by someone else and the person keeps working. So that person was brought in, transported from where she was to come and be a house help, but he's been exploited. And that's, that's already a case for trafficking. The aftermath of human trafficking has only produced tales that saddens the heart. A day when inside our house, due to jealousy from other bosses and so a guy came to my boss wanting to collect me from him with a huge amount of money and there was a disagreement. He was held down like he has a stronger capacity than my boss so he wanted to take me forcefully. That led to a lot of brutality and loss of life that I, I had to be move to Italy. Human trafficking and forced migration has become a canker worm in our society with attendant consequences. A critical look at the effect on the victims reveals a catastrophe that needs to be arrested urgently. I know somebody who told me he wants to go abroad, he wants to go abroad, he wants to go abroad and then he finally went. A lady actually, my friend's younger sister. You know what, she came back with a baby because they were in, in Libya for a long time, they could not cross and all of that. So it was time for them to cross. Something happened and then they could not follow them and then they had to bring them back, repatriate them back, you know, to Nigeria. But she came up with this pregnancy and now she's having a baby, a young lady who had a future. She was an athlete at that time. She goes to stadium to run. 
But because of that strength, people were moving. She had to move alongside. Now she's back with a baby. That plan or that vision for the athlete, um, being an athlete that she was actually uh, having in mind is already thwarted. Now she has to take care, take care of a baby with no skill, no education, nothing. Now, first on the fitting, because it is laced with deception, when a person gets to where he or she has been trafficked to, the first it comes to that realization. Oh, I have been deceived to this uh, place. That will first of all give a lot of psychological disturbance, create a lot of uh, anxiety. And by the time the person is being faced with some of the inhuman treatment that will be going on in that uh, particular uh, place, the person can even go into depression. I've heard of cases where a sibling from a family had traveled abroad uh, just to make quick money as promised. This is seven years, 10 years, no information. No words have been heard from these persons. And sometimes even on social media or if you go online, you see some of them, when they are traveling, they have to cross the high sea. Some, they fall into the ocean. They are drowned to death. You see loss of life. That's the first one. And sometimes even when they come back, most of them, they are not the same. They have serious health conditions, health issues they have to struggle with for the rest of their life. And sometimes they even come back, the money that was being promised is not even there. There was a viral video that went on some years ago where a lady was crying that she had had sex with so many men. She's even yet to even pay the money. You see, at the end of the day, you're, you're just wasting away. The person is wasting away. There was one reunion I did with a, a, one of our victims. She said, sister, I don't think I'll go home. I said, why? He said, how can I go home like this? When I was living, I left with so many things. Coming back, not even a bread. Fears on, okay, how am I going to survive? What will be my fate if I get back home? How will my parents take it? These are fears in their mind. For those that have health challenges, especially those that have HIV, they come back with HIV and AIDS. They just feel all hope is gone. Then this area of stigmatization. We brought a victim home, all the community people have gathered us, you know, as what is this? Why does she have to come now in this way? Some parents don't even want to accept victims at all. They say, I'm not going to go with them. Go with them. I say, go, go with your, your, your child. You brought your child. You don't even know. You don't even welcome us. They don't want to hear the person is a failure. We have seen a case where a, a girl that, uh, that was trafficked to, I think, Italy. So they did this uh, weaving for the girl. They told her that they want her to look presentable and things. The girl didn't know that they, inside the attachment, they put cocaine inside it. So she was carrying drugs, she didn't know. It was when she got to the airport, passed through the scanner, scanner started pointing that she has, she's uh, with her drug. So they now had to lose the hair to bring out the drugs. An innocent girl, she doesn't even know that she has something like that. The end result of all is, is not something to always wish for, because it's dreadful. It's dreadful. It can lead to depression, it can lead to psychological effects within them. Mentally, they can become unstable for life. The effect on the victim is that it causes them untold mystery, untold hardship. It renders them, you know, uh, imbalanced. They lose their self-confidence and they are denied of every good thing of life, their freedom, they are denied, they are denied of education if they are still in that bracket. Their dignity is taken from them. They are left in fear. It has left countless women, I would speak for women, it has left countless fe um, women in fear, in despair, and you know, it's, it robs them of their, their future and you know, restrains them from fulfilling their destinies. Or let's even say from, for, um, from fulfilling their potentials. You know, so at the end of the day, uh, the woman or girl returns and they can't even face future. They can't hold public offices. They can't take decisions on themselves. When they come back, they are actually broken hearted. They feel um, so sad. They come with loss of hope, with helplessness. And you could see in them that 
they, they, they need help. They need someone who will bring back their self-confidence and let them know that they are loved and respected as human beings. They don't trust people. They are suspicious. They are depressed. They are always anxious. Like, where are we going next? Uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, so where, where is my mom? Uh, where is this person? You know? And then they can't take decisions for themselves. They don't reason normally. Their reasoning is upside down. And most of, most of all, like I said, they lack trust. They don't trust you because somebody deceived them. You are going to go to work. A lot of them had jobs they were doing and they were happy here. And they will say, how much are you making in a month? 20,000. Come on, you make 250,000. You know, and nothing will happen to you. You are not going to be a prostitute. You are not going to be this. But in the end, you know, they find out. So when they come back, they are highly traumatized. They are very bitter and they are very withdrawn. How about the parents? The family, both immediate and extended. Human trafficking leaves a sour taste in the mouth of everyone connected to the victim. A good reason why Sidon look attitude is not the way to go. There are some parents that still tell their kids, ah, just look at what your mate is doing. They go out by 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, p.m. in the night. A young girl that is not up to 20 returns back in the morning and the mother is saying, what did you bring? You're getting it. Now, what did you bring? And the young girl will now open her bag, brings money out. From where? So what matters to them is, they are enjoying themselves, driving big cars, living in a good home, not thinking about the detrimental end of the person that is involved in it. The consequences of uh, human trafficking on the family, sometimes they lose a child, they lose a brother or a sister, and sometimes they have to nurse a sibling or a child who is back to home with different kind of horrible sickness some don't even have cure, something you have to manage for the rest of your life. And depends on the kind of sickness. Now, the same money you have gone out to look for, you have to still look for the same money to care for this person as long as they leave. This brings a lot of issues in the family. The home becomes very unstable with a lot of regrets. The family would lack, um, they would, they, they would lack the, the, the joy of being together because one of theirs is already destroyed and they are looking for how can we mend fences. You know, the growth and development of a child is hampered and, you know, family values, you know, are eroded, so. Now let's leave Faith. Let's look at her family. Faith was lured away from the family with promises. Her parents didn't even know where she was going to. But for her, she felt by the time I start sending money back, they will be happy. Now talk about the pain. Talk about the fear the family had to go to. Talk about the loss. Talk about the break in the family circle and dynamics. And then fate is coming back. How is this family going to take fate? Are we going to embrace her? Yes, let's embrace her. But what about the problems she's coming back with? How do we prepare ourselves to help her? What are those sacrifices that we need to make as a family to ensure that we can help fate back to become a shade? Because let's not deceive ourselves. She cannot go back 100% to who she was before she left. So to get a shade of herself back, a little bit of her self-worth, and her position in the family. Now, what about situations whereby you find out that a family member was part of those who conspired to have faith moved? How do we settle the disputes that comes up with that? How do we deal with it? Now, what about the fact that faith has to get closure? This person has to be taken through the paths of the law, face the wrath of the law. How do you ensure as a family that we are ready, even though this person is a member of our family, he has to face the law and pay for what he has done, not just to faith, but to the family. 
Now, how will the family deal with that? Remember, this is an African family. This is a Nigerian family. So how do you deal with that? How do you even convince the family to say yes, allow faith to speak her truth? Then what about the stigma in the society? How do you deal with that? These are all the challenges that we need to face. What about the loss? Some of them will have to go the extra mile to pay. Some sell their houses to send these girls away, to send the boys away. But nothing comes back but pain and loss and emptiness. How do you deal with that? The society is equally not left behind in the attendant consequences of human trafficking. Some of the vices we fight daily has its roots in human trafficking. Hence the need to rally round the victims upon arrival as their peaceful reintegration guarantees our rest as a society and as a nation. A traumatized person is most times a bitter person. So then we have had instances of um, traffickers that they themselves were victims. So they want to make people experience what they have experienced. Usually we think it is just about the money. No, sometimes it's out of bitterness that I went through it. Let them to go and experience it. Especially they want to do it to people that are coming to them for assistance. So then we have people who have gone out to these places, they have experienced wickedness in the raw sense of it, and they come back out of bitterness, unleash that wickedness on people. They come out, they come back with different vices that they transfer, and that has given us, our society has never been this bad. Then when they bring also children from different backgrounds, from different cultures to our country, and these uh, trafficked people are telling our own children. You know, I first spoke about our own that were trafficked out and are coming back with vices. Now, even people, even foreigners that are trafficked there, and they are telling our own children, our own women, that our culture is archaic, that it is okay to do what they do. So that is how we have all these problems that were uh, foreign to us. Because of these human trafficking issues, we've lost a lot of sound minds, sound, sound minds as in healthy youths who are supposed to have a lot to do in the society, help the society become a better place, but they've been trafficked. For every child that is trafficked or every person that is trafficked in their society or in their community from their home, there is a space, there's a gap. So this space is always there. So we try to manage then productive minds have gone. At the end of the day, they come back. Sometimes most of them, they come back constituting nuisance. If they don't come back with whatever expectation they thought they were going to come back with. Its effect on the society is that it restricts economic growth. And then of course it's, you know, uh, undermines um, development of, an, or, or of a country. It um, impoverishes communities. So communities are impoverished because all the girls go out, maybe in search of greener pastures, all the men tell their women, you go and try and walk in Dubai and let's see how it, it comes. But they come back, the families are not together, they are shattered, there is stigmatization because the, the woman who returns, the young girl who returns, didn't actually come back with, any, with anything. So the situation now is worse than before. So, uh, and for the government, like we said, even for the, the child, the youths who are the bedrock of society, the children who are the bedrock, they are destroyed because, you know, uh, their lives have been hampered by, you know, all the negative things that they see there. So in the end, it cannot build a nation. We are asking more women to participate in politics, to hold decision, um, uh, public offices and, uh, and be in decision-making positions. That cannot happen with a trafficked victim because they can't even take decisions on their own. Their self-esteem is eroded and all of that. And for the society, it's, it's really killing us. It has become a caca when it's giving us a bad name and a bad reputation in the international community. If they keep pointing to us that we, from Edo, to be precise, 
from Edo to be precise. Oredo is one with the, one of the highest index that mag, uh, illegal uh, forceful migration and human trafficking is springing up from here. It's a bad name to us as a society. And for the society, one of the major things that they do lose is brain drain. So those people that actually have the capacity to contribute to their society, they take it out from there. And most times the society does not um, embrace them again. And also the parents, when they, they finally see that, oh, this was what my child was doing in that, in that country that he or she went to, they become ashamed of their children and also for themselves too. Now let's leave Faith, let's leave her family, let's go to the society. Faith has gone out. She was a vibrant young child who had dreams, who had ideas, who had visions of her place in society. But she's coming back to you broken. So what are you going to get from her? You're going to spend a whole lot to rebuild her as a society. Now, when you finish rebuilding her, that is when she's going to give you anything back. If at any point she falls between the cracks, what are you going to have? We talk about the crime situation in Nigeria. Our young men, our young women who are coming back, some of them are really broken. What are you getting back into the society? Is it those who are coming back with diseases? How do you deal with that? STDs are not written on the face. Now, the society on its own, human trafficking actually leads to connivance, to getting people who are within the system, even officers, into corrupt practices. That's already eaten into your system. What about these vibrant youths? Because human traffickers will prey on only the strong and the vibrant. So what about the strength that is being moved away from you? What about that very intelligent person who was lured away from your system? Maybe he had the answers to all the problems we have, but he's gone. She's gone. What do you do? The society has lost that person. These are the challenges. And these are the consequences of human trafficking. Let us all join hands to say enough to this scourge. A stitch in time, they say, saves nine. Looking at uh, trafficking, well, human uh, trafficking, it has a lot of uh, psychological effects on a particular person because of the deception and so many other human treatment that are uh, involved in it. So that person is psychologically disturbed. The person would not be uh, thinking uh, straight, a whole lot of uh, anxiety. So the person can have anxiety uh, disorder that could even teach the person into depression and of course, suicide uh, uh, ideation. So one of the things that actually uh, could help a particular person is speaking out because uh, most of these things are born out of bottled up uh, emotion you know you are suffering in silence and you are trying to feel that you could get over uh, you could get over it but it is not just easy you need to talk to somebody and the person need to actually uh, talk you out of it or probably give you some uh, hope or some uh, solution so if you are a victim that has been trafficked or you are the verge of being trafficked and it's already disturbing you psychologically and emotionally, please just speak out. Somebody is out there to uh, talk to you. And in the process of speaking out, you could actually get the help that you are desiring that will help you to get off that uh, uh, traffic. So speak out. If you don't speak out, nobody's going to know what you are passing through. And that is the first step to helping those who are psychologically uh, disturbed that may also be at the risk of having depression and its consequences. Stop, Stop human, human trafficking. trafficking.